Hello and welcome to this tutorial about the black box simulations Airbus A320 for Microsoft Flight Simulator X. This tutorial will show you an ILS approach and a manual landing at Vienna Airport. Right now we are still in cruise flight at flight level 270, so that's changed to the cockpit perspective. The auto flight modes are speed, altitude cruise and navigation right now. We're just passing the point Nemal, the top of descent, which is indicated by the white arrow pointing down, is approximately at the point Limra. So let's uh, prepare the flight management system for the descent and approach. On the flight plan page, let's check the remaining flight plan. To enter uh, an approach and an arrival route, just perform a lateral revision on the arrival airport, select arrival, then the approach and with the next page you can select an arrival route. Now I have somewhat shortened the route, normally the arrival and transition routes in Vienna are longer, but I just uh, entered some kind of shortcut from the point Balat to this point which is uh, already on the final approach course. You could also enter a route to the alternate waypoint, but, but I'll leave that out for now. Let's fill out the radio navigation page. I'll use Foxtrot Mike Delta VR on nav 1 and Whiskey Golf Mike Wagram on nav 2 The LS frequency and the course are auto-tuned from the flight management system. Also entering uh, frequency of an NDP which we will not actually use during this approach. On the progress page you could actually enter the arrival runway so that, that you ha always have a distance information but uh, this isn't supported in this black box Airbus so I'll just enter Fox Mike Delta VR here which is uh, very close to the airport. So we have bearing and distance information now. Then you have to fill out the performance approach page where the VAT information you have normally received from the 80s. The QNH Vienna Airport today is 1007, temperature 15 degrees, and the wind is from 150 degrees with 8 knots. The minimum for the LS approach CAT 1 in Vienna is 800 feet, and the missed approach altitude is 5000 feet. I'm using config full today. You could also use config 3 for landing, which will yield somewhat higher approach speeds. But today I'm sticking with config full, which gives us an approach speed of 124 knots. Let's check the fuel prediction page here. You can check if you have sufficient fuel remaining and how much extra fuel you have. You could also program the secondary flight plan, but this is also not supported. Alright, for the landing I will also arm now the auto brake in the low mode, which means that automatic braking will commence about uh, 4 seconds after touchdown. On the system display, you can check the pressurization. Right now the cabin is maintaining the altitude. On the fuel page, let's check that we have sufficient fuel and it's well balanced. Now on the pressurization page, you can see that the landing elevation has been set automa automatically to 600 feet, which is the elevation of Vienna Airport. So we're slowly approaching our top of descent. So this is where you normally would ask ATC for descent. Let's say we're cleared to flight level 200 now. There are several auto flight modes you can use for descent. First of all, you check the flight level 200 is actually blue, which means armed on the altitude tape. First, I'll use the manage descent mode now, which you get by pushing the altitude knob. Now we're in Manage Descent mode, which means the airplane will automatically follow the pre-programmed vertical path, which is indicated by this magenta circle here. 
now we're a bit below this path. Furthermore, it will also automatically meet all altitude constraints. Like we have one here at Baruch, I'll switch on the constraint display and now we see that there's an altitude constraint at Baruch, which will be automatically met by the auto flight system in manage descent mode, of course provided that I select an altitude of flight level 170 or below first. Another mode is open descent, which I get by pulling the altitude knob. Open descent will uh, cause the thrust being reduced to idle and the speed target will be uh, kept by adjusting the aircraft pitch. This will not automatically meet any altitude constraints. However. Now we have a managed speed target here, which is indicated by the mag magenta speed bug. So it's taking the speed from the flight management system. It's the 286 knots now. You can always intervene by choosing selected speed, which you get by pulling the altitude knob. Now the bug gets blue. You can select, for example, right now a higher speed. And as we're still in open descent mode, this, mea this means the aircraft nose will move down and vertical speed will increase. Let's say we are cleared further down to flight level 120, so I'm setting this with the altitude knob. Another mode is vertical speed, which you get by pulling the vertical speed knob and then turning it to select the desired vertical speed. Now this vertical speed is followed and the A-thrust is in speed mode again, which means it will fly the selected or managed speed by adjusting thrust. Now let's switch back to open descent for the time. I'm also increasing the speed a bit, so let's see things happen a bit faster. Let's say we get a shortcut by ATC, so we are cleared to this point on finally. So I'm entering this on a Direct 2 page, FI16. In the real airplane, you would have to confirm this selection on the FMS, but here you haven't. So the aircraft is now ready turning towards this point. Let's fly some high-speed descent with 330 knots, which gives us quite a high descent rate. But at any point, if you need a still even higher descent rate, you can extend the speed brakes. On the A320, however, if the autopilot is on, regardless of uh, how much you extend the speed brake lever or you, uh, how much you move it back, the speed brakes will only move to half deflection. If you need full speed brake deflection, you would have to switch off the autopilot. All right, now let's retract the speed brakes again. For descent planning, there's a very easy rule, which works. You take your altitude, 18,000 feet now, times three, so 18 times three, it's about 54. And this should correspond to the miles that you have left for descent. But there are additional factors that you have to take into consideration. First of all, wind. Right now we have a tailwind, so you should plan a few miles additionally for the tailwind. Also, we are flying at a very high speed. We will need a few miles to decelerate to our approach speed, so also keep that in mind. And last but not least, also check your actual weight. The higher the weight is, the more miles you need for descent and if all other conditions stay the same. So just take your altitude time 3 and then allow some additional factors for wind, weight and your speed. What we should already have done is now switch the seatbelt sign to on to notify the cabin that we're ready. Alright, sorry that we have already started the descent. ATC now clears us to an altitude, 9,000 feet on the QNH1007. So I first select 9,000 feet. And then push the barrel knob and select the QNH1007. Copilot does the same. 
and then the altimeters are compared. Of course, you should also set the standby altimeter to the local QNH now. We're passing 13,600 feet. If I switch to manage speed now, the speed target will revert to the descent speed target from the flight management system, which is 286 knots. I'm now using uh, vertical speed and reduce the speed to 250 knots, which is the standard speed restriction below flight level 100. So I'm trying to reach that speed now. I have to also pull the speed number, of course, so let's try that again. Now we're, now we're in selected speed and I'm reducing it to 250 knots. Speed is slowly reducing as we're still descending. I'm now activating the approach phase by selecting this prompt twice. Now what would happen now after I have activated the approach phase, if I change to manage speed, the speed target is moving to the minimum clean speed or green dot. And as soon as I'm extending the flaps, the speed target will automatically move to the corresponding speeds and finally to the final approach speed. As long as you're in clean configuration, the manage speed target will always be minimum clean after you have activated the approach phase. Actually, I don't want that yet, so I'm changing back to selected speed, 250. Let's check our miles again. Around 40 miles to go. We're at 11,400 feet, so that looks good. Now let's suppose we're getting radar vectors by ATC, so I pull the heading knob to enter the heading mode and the heading bug in blue on the PFD on the ND is moving to the selected head. Also the aircraft of course is turning towards it. Now I switch on the LS, the LS interpretation on the PFD. Now you have the localizing glide slope scales. Now I notice that I have here Fox Mike Delta VOR, which is not realistic because here on the PFD you always have a localizer frequency and the corresponding DME. So what I'm doing right now is I'm entering the LS frequency manually, 108.5. Now it's also automatically taken to the VOR1 here, which is actually also not realistic, at least on the FMS I know. Well, if you enter the LS frequency manually, you have to be careful to also select the corresponding inbound course, because otherwise you will get problems when intercepting the localizer then check on the PFT that you have set the correct frequency and inbound course. We're almost at 10,000 feet. I'm switching on, on the landing lights to be better visible for other traffic. We're approaching some clouds now, so you have to check the total air temperature. If it's above 10 degrees, it is not. It's 8 degrees and we have visible moisture so it's time now to switch on the engine MTIs if we really enter those clouds. It is now clears us to 4000 feet and we are entering the clouds so let's switch on engine MTIs. Speed is still a bit high so I'm reducing the vertical speed
Let's check our progress. We are passing 9,000 feet. The distance of 26 miles to the threshold. So we actually quite a good profile. As we have reached the speed of 250 knots now, I'm switching back to open descent mode. I'm going to use the speed brakes once again to increase our descent rate. Temperature is now 11 degrees, so it's above 10 degrees. You can switch off the engine NTS. Let's reduce our speed to 220 knots. What you notice here is this the VLS, the yellow bar, has increased because I have extended the speed brakes. Just have to take care that you do not reduce your speed or your speed bug below that VLS speed. As soon as I retract the speed brakes again, the VLS will reduce again. Let's turn a bit further more to the right. You can al already see the city of Vienna now on the right hand side. We're approaching 4,000 feet. I don't think we really need the speed brakes anymore, so let's retract them. Now you see that VLS has already reduced again. Okay, we'll level off very shortly. Now we're on audited star mode, so the speed will start to decrease very quickly. I'm now using manage speed again, so the speed bug is moving to minimum clean speed or green dot. Now we cleared the ATC for a right turn heading 120 and for the Alice approach, actually heading 125, or even 130 to have a better intercept here. Let's arm the approach mode by pushing the approach button and then the autopilot 2 button. Now glide slopes and localizer modes are armed. The approach capability is CAT3 dual and the autopilot 1 and 2 are active. The 
BTC clears us to 3000 feet for better intercept. So I'm using vertical speed now. Speed is below VFE next. So I'm selecting config 1. And I forgot to actually pull vertical speed knob. So here you can see how important it is to always check the FMA if your selected mode has really engaged. Now we're actually descending to 3000 feet. Localizer star mode is active. The airplane is now intercepting the localizer. And now localizer mode is active. Speed is slowly reducing through VFE next, which is 200 knots. So we can select config 2. Glide slope star mode means that the airplane is intercepting glide slope. So I'm selecting 5000 feet on the altitude for the missed approach. Airport is now straight ahead. The speed is slowly reducing. Now if we have to reduce speed more rapidly always extend the landing gear a bit earlier than normal so let's extend the gear oh here you can see some AI aircraft I forgot to switch that off now we are kind of <laughs> overtaking this airplane well, never mind now. After the gear is down, switch on runway turn on, off lights and the nose lights. Also arm the spoilers. I'm selecting flaps 3 and flaps 4. Configuration is config full now. Very shortly the landing memo will appear on the engine warning display. Speed is now at the approach speed. And the landing memo is showing us that we have done everything. The signs are on, cabin is ready, the gear is down, flaps are set and the spoilers are off. So we're basically ready to land. First I'm going to switch off the A thrust. I just have to be careful to first retard the thrust levers to approximately match the actual thrust setting and only then disconnect the A thrust. Otherwise the thrust will very quickly move up to uh, climb power. Alright, I'm now changing to the normal cockpit perspective because I find it a bit easier to land. The One black five. box Airbus seems to have some uh, roll oscillations when flying it manually so you have to be careful about that. Switching off the autopilot now. Be very careful with roll input. Light slow. Glide slope warning is coming on pretty early in the simulation. But we're still on the puppy, so we're on glide path. Four hundred. For the flare, depending on uh, your vertical speed and some other factors, you should uh, start to bring the nose up to about 30 feet and then retard the thrust levers at about 20 feet. 
100. It's trying to do that now. I find it a bit 50, tricky to land. 40, 30, 20. All right, retard, retard the fast levers, get the yeah. nose up. Now after touchdown select reverse thrust. Auto brakes are working. At 70 knots you should reduce to idle reverse and when reaching taxi speed you should stow the thrust reverses. Oh, I now forgot to disarm the auto brakes, so that's why we have just come to a complete stop right now. So let's continue the taxi and I'll just vacate the runway and then stop briefly to do all the after landing items. Normally you have your colleague to help you with that, but as I'm alone now, I'll better stop for a second and do the after landings landing items when the aircraft is uh, standing still. So let's just stop here for a moment and uh, switching back to the virtual cockpit. After vacating, switch off the strobe lights, the landing lights. Also, get the nose, put the nose lights to switch to taxi. Disarm the ground spoilers, retract the flaps, switch off the weather radar, and set the TCAS to standby. Now, let's also activate the steering tiller. and start the taxi. We're going to taxi now along a pretty standard taxi route after landing on runway 16, just taking us via taxiway Delta to one of the stands of a Terminal 3. We're doing a right here to join taxiway Delta Trying not to get seasick. Let's switch on the APU now in preparation for parking later on. check the system display if the APU is in fact starting. The flap is open and is starting very very slowly. CPU is really slow, slowest I've ever seen. Normally it takes about just one minute to be up and running. Ok, 
Okay, we're passing exit 3-4 now. We're going to turn left at exit 3-2. Exit 33. So the next one is we want to turn left. Now we're going to taxi along the blue line to one of the Foxtrot stands at Terminal 3. Let's just take this next stand here, which is Foxtrot 1-6. Now after stopping, first of all, set the parking brake. Then check again if the APU is really running on the system display. And if it is, you can uh, switch off the engines. Turn off the beacon light and all the other lights, except the nav lights. Switch off the fasten seatbelt sign. You can use APU bleed if you want for air conditioning and uh, then switch off the fuel pumps. So now that's basically it. Uh, all that's left to do is the parking checklist and the paperwork. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Welcome to Vienna and I hope to see you next time.